Why has the whole world lost its mind? Because our creator knew we needed to live in a crazy world until we could figure out the difference between good and evil. In six days, consider 2 Peter 3, 8. One day is to the Lord is a thousand to men. In six days, God allowed men to rule over other men, even though they couldn't guide their own paths, Jeremiah 10, 23, so that humanity could prepare for the Lord's Sabbath, where he would rule as king in heaven over the world with his Bible delivered once for all time to the saints in 70 AD, Judas 3. The thousand year reign of Christ is divided into two ages, Ephesians 2, 7, by the denominational apostasy, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 11. The apocalypse is about the restoration of God's perfect moral standard that he will rule over this world with. And it is the end of crazy. Well, where has God been? Well, because since it's so crazy, for men to stand up against God, the Lord's been hiding his wisdom from men. Unless the Lord hid his face, his power, his glory, his majesty, and Bible from men, we could have never been in the spiritual dark ages in the past 1,680 years. Ezekiel 39, 25 through 29. And because he hid the Bible from mankind, where there's no law, there's no sin. So that's how we got to learn about sin without being held accountable for that sin. Why would an all-powerful, all-loving God allow human suffering? Because he wants to get you ready for an eternity with him. God knew the decisions you would make before you were ever created. He knows who's going to be Christians. They're already chosen before the foundation of the world. He knows what you would do if you had objective truth. And so he knows who would be righteous and who wouldn't be. And so he's plugged all of humanity in the best places for humanity, both the righteous and the unrighteous. And it's all about getting humanity, giving men the best opportunity to spend an eternity with him. That's why we had to be patient in our suffering. Yes, we had to go through the school of hard knocks to get ready. But we can't even imagine eternity or God our loving God wanting to spend an eternity with us. You see, we get a pet or a spouse or any kinds of relationships in this world without thinking things through. But God has plans for us for an eternity. The ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. Whatever happened to sin? And how do we get in so much trouble in the world today? We have been eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And so the Lord has overlooked much sin while we tried to figure out the difference between good and evil. Acts 17, 30. The times of ignorance God overlooked. He winked at. You see, subjective truth of men is missing the mark of the objective truth from God. Consider Adam and Eve in the garden. They did what God said. He blessed them and he protected them. But the minute they started eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, doing that which God did not command, subjective the truth of men, well, it harmed them. That's what sin is. God doesn't like sin because it's just, it's how we destroy ourselves. And so for 6,000 years of history of humanity, we ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We figured out what sin was without being held accountable for it because we didn't have the law. Without law, there is no sin. But now that we have the law back, now that we're restoring the Bible from God, we can identify sin easily. What is sin? It's a subject for the man. It's doing the opposite of what God said to do. It's not taking care of It's doing things which harm us. Well, we're going to have God's perfect moral standard. Now we're going to know what sin is. We're going to know the cost of sin. Our Lord is really taking care of his creation. He's preparing us for the perfect law of liberty. So that's why we read in 1 John, we need to quit sinning. <laughs> you see, well, we certainly couldn't understand that before because we, we were d doing things that would be sin if we had the Bible from God, but they weren't considered sinning. 
So now we have to quit sinning. It's okay before we got by with it. We were trying to figure out what good and evil was. But now we're putting together the perfect law of liberty. It's time to stop sinning. Because we can identify sin. We know what it is. We know the cost of it. But even in First John, he says, when we do sin, when we stumble, we have an advocate with Jesus Christ. And so also you read in First John that we must walk in the light. That was impossible before we had the Bible from God. Now we can walk in light. Now we can avoid sin, those things which destroy us. Now we can stay away from human suffering. When we reach the kingdom of heaven, that's where we will have all spiritual blessings in Christ. You see, the Lord wants to protect us and to bless us exceedingly. And he will in the second age of the kingdom of heaven in about 40 years. Is it a problem that our grandparents weren't Christians? Most of our grandparents were believers who lived in a time that required their great character. You know, the great thing about the kingdom of God and salvation coming down from heaven now is that both the living righteous and the dead righteous are somehow going to be able to enjoy that great wedding feast, the time of getting ready before that union in heaven with Christ. Indeed, even those who live long enough, and some of you will live long enough, enter the kingdom of heaven in 40 years. But even if you do, you're only going to spend a short period of your time alive in the kingdom. And the rest of the time, you're somehow going to be in the kingdom or associated with the kingdom after you're dead. Which is the best denomination? My friends, there is only one faith, and it is not of men. There is no salvation or truth associated with men. Second Thessalonians 2 verse 10. Remember the Catholic Church in 340 AD gave up the preaching of Christ, objective truth, that's the Bible from God, and they gave up salvation, 2 Thessalonians 2.10. Now, we were under strong delusion. We didn't know what that meant because God wanted us to think we had the best denomination. He wanted us to do our best in this world for 1,608 years, really to show basically that that. The ways of men aren't good enough. The great thing about the kingdom of God is, of course, is that both the living righteous and the dead righteous will somehow be able to enjoy that great wedding feast. You remember Paul on one occasion, he said, I'm going to speak as man. I'm going to speak about the religions of men. And then he started to talk about when he was a Pharisee, all this stuff he counted as dung. But when he's talking as man, you know, he might be saying, you know, being a Pharisee might have been the best. Wasn't good enough. It was like done. Now we're talking about the ways of God. Why can't we understand the Bible? <laughs> you are only meant to understand a little bit of the Bible's of men. Enough to be counted as righteous. The Bible's of men, the wisdom from below, the Septuagint, for example, was the authority behind the crucifixion of Christ. The Catholic Bible was the authority behind all the abuse of children. The children are born in sin. The wisdom from below. Bible's of men, the wisdom from below caused great harm to this humanity. God allowed them. Why? Because Christ had to be crucified. Because there had to be a conflict. Our faith had to be challenged. We had to learn the difference between good and evil. And so our education in the spiritual dark ages was to not understand the Bibles of men, for the whole world to be shades of gray, so that when we came out of the apostasy, we would realize the ways of men do not work but you know with the perfect law of liberty the bible from god it is meant to be understood in fact the part of the restoration of the bible from god is to get it in our hearts and in our minds we're going to know the word of god it's going to protect us it's going to free us from every wind of doctrine men it means it's perfect moral standard it means we're going to be able to understand we're going to be able to identify the subject of the men easily. You know, it's interesting. God gave us a strong delusion, but the wisdom of men doesn't work. That means all the history books that based on the subjective truth of men, they're not worthless. What about the dictionaries today? They're not worth anything. Our history, what about so-called science a lot of times? And 
even medical profession based upon the subjective through the mean that messes everything up. Our whole world is going to be turned back right side up as we continue to study the objective truth from God. Consider 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. Only the Spirit knows the mind of God. We were just given a strong delusion to where we thought we could speak objective truth from God. We do not know God. The ways of God are as high as the heavens above the ways of men. We are about to be spiritually enlightened, exceeding abundantly above anything we could have ever imagined. Men always have their thumbs on the scales of justice. We always have an agenda. We're always going to mess things up. And really, that's what God wanted us to understand during the apostasy. We cannot save ourselves. And that's why God allowed us, the founding fathers, to understand some things about the objective truth of God so that we could have the Constitution and Declaration of Independence, so that we would have some freedom in this nation, checks and balances, because men can't rule over other men, morally speaking, without messing everything up. You know, with God's perfect moral standard, objective truth from God, there's gonna, not going to be any debates. Men's opinions about what God has to say don't matter. Habakkuk 2, verse 20. Let all the earth keep silent before him. We're talking about morality, morally speaking. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. What do you mean that it's time for the apocalypse? I'm not ready. Whether you're ready or not, it's time for men to understand the book of Revelation. You see, the book of Revelation is about a vision in heaven. And there God the Father has in his hand a scroll, and that scroll is sealed with seven seals. On. Well, the apocalypse means that we understand what's going on. That seal is, that sealed up Bible is the Catholic Bible. You see, in 340 AD, the Catholic Church hid away the Bible. They hid away Christianity. They hid away the truth. Objective truth of God. And it's been hidden for 1,680 years. Now, men, we've understood in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 10, that they lost salvation and that they lost the Bible. And so we've had Reformation, Church Reformation. Do you know what? It didn't work. Why? Because only God, the objective, only God can give the objective truth of God. Only God can restore the Bible from God. So we've had church restoration, but that didn't work either. We desperately need to be able to restore the Bible from God because we don't have salvation without it. So you see this picture is seen in heaven. God holds the Catholic Bible. And then there's inquiries. Who's going to fix it? Who can break the seven seals? We need salvation on this earth. Look what's happening to us. Christ is able to. Only Christ. He shed his blood. He preaches objective truth, the gospel of the kingdom. You know, the gospel of the kingdom. You're born of the water and the spirit, the Holy Spirit from God, the Bible from God. We need the Bible from God. Only Christ can give us objective truth. Only Christ can preach the gospel of the kingdom. We only have salvation available through Christ. So yes, he can break the seal. And so he breaks the seals in the book of Revelation, basically over a period of 40 years so that modern man can restore the perfect law of liberty, God's perfect moral standard, so we enter into the kingdom of heaven. So in about 40 years, that's exactly what's going to happen. In Matthew chapter 22, verse 18, we read in that context, if you can understand the prophecy of Christ, which means shows us how to restore the Bible, well, then the invitation for the Lord is available to us. The Lord, the Spirit, and the Bride say, come. We can now be Christians again. Second age of Christianity is back. Yes, the apocalypse is now. It means the end of the earth for people that have sold their souls to Satan. 
and can't repent. But it means salvation has been brought down from heaven again for those who will repent. My friends, I have some good news for you and some bad news for you. The bad news is that we've been in apostasy out of Christianity for 1,680 years. That means without the salvation from God, and that means without objective truth from God. But the good news is, is that the apostasy, which includes all religions of men and all the philosophies of men and all the, the ways of men, we were forced to be under them so that we would understand that only the ways of God can save us. Only the one faith system from God is where we find salvation. The apocalypse revelation is about restoring the Bible, objective truth from God that was given to man once and for all time in 70 AD so that Christ could rule over this world as king. Christianity is back. And when has been the last time you've heard the objective truth from God without men standing between you and God messing everything up? You get copies of our commentaries, books, paperbacks, hardbacks, EPUBs, zip drives, these locations. I look forward to being your brother in the second age of Christianity. My name is Randall Kent Maxwell. I'm the watchman for the fallen spiritual house of Israel. It's my job to give you the Lord's warnings and to let you know that the Lord God Almighty is no longer hiding his face, his power, his glory, his majesty, and his Bible from humanity. Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary, on Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary. And he paved the way by blood that we might win a bright shining crown. Praise his blessed holy name, salvation has been brought down, O glory. Praise the Lord, blessed Lord, salvation has been brought down from heaven. Go and shout, go and shout, and tell it to the world around. Tell it afar in every nation, tell it afar all over creation. Praise the Lord, blessed Lord, salvation has been brought down.